Hey, it's Mike Caruso, publisher of The Fisherman Magazine, and thanks for subscribing to The Fisherman's e-newsletter. Today we have something brand new to introduce to you. It's our weekly video fishing forecast, where every Thursdays you'll receive this second e-newsletter that provides insight and forecasts for the fishing conditions this weekend and for the days beyond. Fisherman editors have a tremendous wealth of knowledge coming to them on a daily basis, whether it be from field reporters, uh, party boat captains, charter boat captains, tackle shops, or, or experts just like yourself who volunteer information. And uh, we wanted to share that information with everybody so that you can have the best possible weekend and days ahead of fishing. Really our goal is to put you on the fish so that you enjoy it just like we do. Uh, so every Thursday the video fishing forecast comes to you and on Mondays our traditional e-newsletter that includes the comprehensive fishing reports uh, that are gathered literally just really hours before on Sunday evenings uh, as well as the link to our current digital edition links to our feature of the week or features I should say of the week on thefisherman.com also the events in your area the weather conditions for your area and we've recently opened up to the public the entire archive of what we call hotspots hotspots breaks down specific locations and profiles them so that you can go to many of them and fish them effectively. So, thanks again for subscribing to the Fisherman e-newsletter. And uh, if you like what you see, we encourage you to share it with someone else. And now, enjoy the Fisherman's video fishing forecast. Hi, I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman magazine, coming to you with a new weekly web fishing report on Thursday. Moving into this week's report, catches and picture submissions both kicked into gear as it seems like everyone is catching fish all across New England. I once again urge you to email your, me your best fishing catch pictures at tlipinski at thefisherman.com as we will not only be using them in print but also in the weekly fishing forecast videos as you'll see, see throughout today's video. As always, we're going to start off in Connecticut where the porgy bite in Long Island Sound is finally getting going according to Captain Greg of the Black Hawk out in Niantic. He's been putting his customers on some dinner plate sized porgies with some great regularity while fishing on the New York side of the sound. They're also finding some black sea bass, flu, keeper stripers, and bluefish in the mix, but the sea bass have to go back until the season opens in a few weeks. Striped bass fishing in Connecticut continues to get better and better as some larger fish are finally moving into the area. The rivers are still producing some nice fish like the 36 incher that Nicole Nadeau boated while fishing up the Connecticut River last week, and have finally begun to receive word of some big fish out in the sound. Look for the next few weeks to produce some of the largest striped bass of the season as those spawned out fish drop out of the Hudson River. This coming time frame produced just about all of the 70s and the vast majority of the 60s landed in Connecticut waters that I'm aware of as well as innumerable 50s both from the boat and from surf. Fluke season also kicked off this past weekend and the early reports are of some larger fish being found in the sound already. I received word of a nice 9 pounder landed by Richard Melanson sailing out of Clinton and a few others I spoke to did well fishing over closer to Montauk. Moving on to Rhode Island, the big news of the week is the excellent fluke fishing being had right now. As a report from the Francis Fleet put it, fluke fishing was wildly improved this past week and due to this they've now begun to sail daily. They boated multiple fluke over 10 pounds over the weekend and the great fishing has continued right into this week as well. Most of the pool winners of late have been in the 9 to 10 pound range like the 9.2 pounder landed by Chris Mace on the Gale Francis on Friday. We also received a, another good uh, fluke catch. It was a Dreamboat Challenge fluke entry from Billy Barber as he landed a 10.4 pound fluke that he weighed in at Galilee Bait and Tackle over the weekend. This fish could also be seen on the cover of this week's report supplement. Suffice to say, you'd be well advised to hit the waters off Rhode Island if a big fluke is on your bucket list for 2015. And up in Massachusetts, I'd like to begin the report by wishing Ed Nowak a speedy recovery as he was hospitalized last week. Ed is a staple of the North Shore fishing community and has been a longtime member of the fisherman family. We look forward to finding out that the old gaffer is back on his feet once again. Much like in Connecticut, the porgy bite in Buzzards Bay is getting ramped up with both good numbers and size of fish being landed right now. This is most likely being fueled by the influx of squid that have moved into the area, and Matt Ryan sent me a picture of one of a pile of big fat tubes that he jigged up this week off of Falmouth. Bluefish have also begun to feed on the squid, and Doug from Dick's Bait and Tackle out of Martha's Vineyard reported that a surf caster out there landed a nice weak fish this week. Last week's Zobo Flounder Fishing Derby was a huge success, with over 65 participants battling it out in the waters in and around Boston Harbor. I had the pleasure of fishing alongside tournament organizer and owner of Fishing Fanatics, Pete Santini. While I didn't finish in the money, I had a great time, and a ton of money was raised for the Children's Hospital of Boston. Top spot of the weekend went to Patrick Dickerson with a 1.96 pound black pack. 
Reports since the weekend are of continued excellent action on Flounder, and Captain Jason Colby of Little Sisters Charters put one of his customers onto a, his first three-plus pounder of the season on Monday. Out in my old stomping grounds in western Massachusetts, the shad run is in full swing on the Connecticut River, and I received a picture of a nice American shad landed by Samantha Warren of Amherst. More than 240,000 shad have been lifted over the Holyoke Dam so far this year, with 11,605 being lifted this Monday alone. Now is the time to get out of this awesome fishery before the run begins to slow down in the coming weeks. So there you have it. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines on the water. To receive the latest fishing reports, subscribe to the Fisherman's YouTube page. Click subscribe, then click the settings button and check send me updates. You'll now receive notifications of the latest Fisherman YouTube videos and reports. If you're already a subscriber, make sure you've checked send me updates in the settings so you receive the latest notifications.